I have opened up too, too many, so cross some. So this is the uh, summary of genealogy uh, from chapter five to chapter 11. And this just uh, give us an idea, uh, the generation, the, the generations before uh, Noah's flood, uh, the time uh, when the, the judgment come uh, through flooding and you see, Noah has previous generation uh, to receive the faith and uh, how uh, the previous generation interact with the Lord and continue to carry the image of God uh, to up to himself. And then he needed to pass it to his generation. And Bible describes Noah is a righteous uh, in his generation. Uh, he is a perfect man. And he also walked with the Lord. So God uh, revealed to him his plan. Uh, and God was so disappointed uh, to the world. And he is going to uh, judge and destroy. Uh, the, the life on the earth, uh, the birth in the air. So God commanded Noah to build an ark. Right? Okay, let's continue. God's salvation revealed amidst the great judgment. So chapter, chapter six, let's read chapter six, verse 13. Okay, chapter 13, uh, let's read chapter 13 to, uh, to chapter uh, 16, chapter 13, uh, chapter 6, 13, verse 13 to 16. Can uh, Lina, Lina from Queen's Rye, please. Lina, you? Genesis 6, 16, no, 13, yeah, 13. Chapter 6, verse 13. 13. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the, with the earth. Up to 16. 16, okay. 14. Make yourself an ark of go gopher wood, Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. 15. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300, 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits and it's height 30 cubits. 16. You shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to a cubit up, um, above and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. Thank you. God said the earth was filled with fire and, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So the earth was cursed because of human sin. Now, again, because of uh, the violence of humankind, God said, I will destroy them with the earth. So the, the animals actually are uh, also victims of uh, wickedness of human being. So that's why, you know, if the leader, the, the management, the, the, the manager is supposed to be good but turned to bad, then all his, uh, his people will suffer along with. Right? 
So this time you see how to, to you, to you, O Lord, belongs mercy for you render to each one according to his work. This is how, how we understand God will judge everything according to what person did. Every step, every action uh, comes out a result, a consequence. So if we, we just saw something there, then you will also read it. No matter good or bad, it will just according. So God give no other instruction how to build an ark. To him, this is a total new, right? Ark means a rectangle box. The same word of the ark, the ark of covenant. Later in the book of Exodus, we will see this is also a box, a rectangle box. So mankind will say, uh, surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God full judge on earth. That's in Psalm 58 verse 11. There is a reward for the righteous. There is also a God full judge on earth. So no one will escape. So always consider we, we will receive the, the end, whether it's a, a crown of righteousness or a eternal punishment. It depends on how we perform in this life on the earth. Okay, from the, the great flood of Noah's era, then we see this is a, a, a thing will come uh, in the future, no doubt at all. So the end of all flesh has come before me. I will destroy it. And then God said, you make an ark. You make an ark of gopher wood, uh, special. So God designed, God already uh, said with what materials. Uh, no one need to use and go for wood. You can Google it. It's right now nobody really know what kind of wood is because it could be uh, being destroyed or whatever God, God make it uh, after flood this thing. But we know there is a seed rich in resin, water resistant. So this go for wood, which God designed to use must be very, uh, very good uh, uh, for, the, for the arc. So no doubt uh, the, the material will be deteriorated uh, during the flood because God used it and this become perfect the best. And the structure, I said, make runes in the dark, in the arc, right? covered inside and outside with pitch. So waterproof, no worry at all. In size, it's a huge, right? And God designed a window on the top, only a cubit, a cubit high, right? So the only you can you can look above, and then you see, you 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 may see uh, something from above, not from side. So this is the special design uh, of God, and the one only one door on in the in each side. And this door, we don't know how wide, but this is only one door. So only one access, no, no any other entrance. And then God make a covenant to uh, Noah, and especially mention to uh, him what he's supposed to bring with. And in, in, in chapter six, uh, from verse, uh, like we already see, Noah is a right, a just man, walk with God, fear God, have faith to God. So he is an outstanding of not doing wicked, right? He, he just follow what God said, walk with God, just follow his father, right? You know, 
what we got. So by faith, Noah, being defined the world of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Hebrews 11, 7, uh, that's what we study uh, already. Noah, he feared God. So he received what God, uh, what God want to do. Uh, the, 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 we, call, we can call it the secret. And he is the solo one who, who knows what's going on later. Okay. So what he uh, is going to do uh, is very special. From outsider, they have no idea why Noah is doing such a thing. But he continued uh, to follow what God's command. Uh, and, and this is the, uh, uh, a question we may raise. Where did Noah's faith came from that make him able to walk with God? In the corruptive generation, right? In that generation, he is the, the, the entire world is full of uh, wickedness, iniquities. But Noah was not one of them, just being separate. So we, we from the genealogy, the, the picture huh, we see, his grandfather, right? Matusela, Matusala, might talk about the story of his great grandfather, who is Enoch, right? Who walked with God. So the previous generation needed to pass on the good faith to the next. The most important thing of a generation is the faith, their faith, how they trust God in their difficulties and then pass it to the next generation. So the younger one can learn also how to fear God and also follow what God said. And eventually they will also experience God's salvation, and this faith become their own. And through this generation, then pass to the next. So that's how this faith, pure and very, very, very good faith can continue until the, the end of the earth. Let's turn to Psalm 71, verse 17 to 18. Psalm 71, verse 17 to 18, 17 to 18. Okay. Can Sister uh, Renee Lee read, please? 17, O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. 18, now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. Thank God. So as a, a younger generation, have you ever uh, tried to make friends with the old generation? Have you ever find a chance to talk to the grandpas in the church, you know, try to be friend of the grandma. If you do, then you will, you will hear many good testimony. You know, a wise, a wise young man is a, a person who know how to absorb the experience of faith of the older generation. Because through their story, their experience, then your vision will be opened because something you haven't experienced yet because you, you are not that age yet, but you already know what's to come. And because someone already has experienced it, then you can receive this free, free gift of experience Right? It's precious. So precious. You cannot buy from your money. Right? Now, if you want to buy something of 
people's knowledge you pay. Right? This is called it's copyright. But in the church, if you just talk to the older generation, you learn from the, the, the previous older one, then you, you, you may receive this wisdom. Right? So please, younger generation, brother, sister, in your, now you in your 20s, try to communicate and talk to the, 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 old, the older generation, just like your grandpa, your grandma. You know, some, some people, they, they raise the, the concern, our younger generation uh, become just like, a, you know, someone neglected the, the older because they just try to gather together with the, the same age only. They can see that I have nothing to, to talk with the, the grandpa, grandma. You know, sometimes maybe the, the language barrier, but it's not all, always the case, right? So talk to each other. Then you will receive a good story of how to rely on God. And a lot of the, the, the wisdom or, or a good practice of life or the knowledge you, will, you, you may receive from the old man, okay? It, because they experience, they know what is true. And once you, you, you live up that age, then you will say, yes, it is. And, I, and you want to continue to pass it to the next. Consider one day you, you could be also grandpa, grandma, right? But if the younger one just ignore you, just don't want to talk, to you, you also feel lonely. Right? But to them, it's fine because if you don't talk to me, I'm okay because they are they work so long already. Now they are, their goal is to one day I will face our law. Right? The most important uh, man is Jesus. Okay, so generation to generation, and then and then God God make a covenant to Noah. Let's read, let's read verse uh, 17 to 20. Chapter 6, 17, uh, seven, seven, verse 17. Uh, let's read, read up to 22 uh, together. Next, can I have uh, brother Matthias? Matthias from Austin. Verse 17, and behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth should die. 18, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. Verse 19, and of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Verse 20. Of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every kind will, will come to you to keep them alive. 21. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. 22. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. Amen. Okay. So now who to enter into the ark? Right? Noah and his whole family, his son and his his son's wives. So when we are, when we are saved, the immediate family we want to save as our household, our parents, right? our children, grandchildren. This is how God designed a family. So in 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 the ark, they are all a family, the same family. They are they are. They are communicate with the same language, right? Uh, and they can understand each other. And you, you can see uh, Noah and his sons, uh, they have to communicate. They have to command the animals to, it's just like very peaceful in the, in the ark. So all every living things of all fresh you should bring, Two of every kind, a pair, right? Should be male and female. It's God's design. And what to prepare and how to live in the ark. So God give 
Noah, the, com the covenant, informed him what to come means he needed to prepare. And God command, take for yourself all food that is eaten, shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. So consider, store, store all the food they need. But God didn't tell him for how much, how long. So it totally depends on the understanding of Noah to what God command. So he will not just prepare for one day for himself, but he had to consider everything. So one step, not enough, must be further. So today we tend to just do our duty. Okay, if, if uh, the school just asked me to do this, then I just, okay, I, I'm enough, good enough. But actually consider what God command him. Not that every details, but God just give him some rooms, right? Some room. And Noah had to understand, okay, if we if I prepare then, maybe. So he had to consider the future. Okay. Noah's response to the covenant of God, right? He according, according to all that God command him, just do it. Build up and then start to consider the food they need and the animal. And animal is, is eating different food with man, right? So this is a faith of Noah. Huh? What were some challenges and obstacles that he had to overcome for obeying what the Lord said? It's just very simple in verse 22. Oh, just Noah did a according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Just one sentence, simple. But how many challenges or obstacles he, he had to overcome it and just believe. Consider no rain before. In, verse, in chapter 2, verse 5 to 6, already see only mist, right? Only mist come up from the earth. Never heard such a thing as flood. Rain come down from above. God only let Noah know the coming judgment. He is the only one who received this revelation. So people didn't understand and have no idea what he, he is talking about. The ark to be built is gigantic, very huge, the big structure. And how could he complete this God? God has granted him wisdom. And God will also help Noah to finish it because this is not his own design. Okay. Number four, only his whole own family, son, right? Three sons and three uh, daughter in law can enter. His other relatives were not able to enter because God made a covenant to his household only. Okay. So you can see the why God just say, Noah's family, his son and, and son's wife. But how about other? Noah must have also brothers, siblings. How about his cousins? No, God only said to you and your, your sons and son's wife. How to bring all the, the living creatures, birds, and then livestock into the ark. This is a big challenge, right? How, where to find them? Okay, and have to store all sorts of food. And he has not any other previous experience or others can provide him assistance. So, so we only rely on what God said and just, just do what God command. And they said, if he doesn't know, then ask God. This is the, the answer. God will, God will talk to Noah. So consider he works with God, okay? So all the details, whatever he doesn't know, then go to God and ask, and then he will get the answer. This is how we today, if we don't know things, then we pray, we ask our Lord. Now, we are even better because God already gave us the Bible. And Bible is the 
a uh, stint of uh, Christian living. And he, the Bible is uh, the only uh, spiritual truth. Uh, so just like a, a guidance, a book of life. The spiritual meaning of the ark and the, the covenant to, to, to Noah. Okay. So this just is a prefigures the spiritual true church at the end time before the great judgment. The salvation of God revealed to men before judgment. So this God's love, God's mercy. Number three, establish before destruction according to God's will. So God already said, and then the destruction will definitely come. Now, and God designed a structure for men to take as refuge so they can hide inside and be safe. Right? And God gave grace period of time and only one ark can save. Only one, only one was built. Number seven, the, the ark only have one door. All these characteristics of the ark and the covenant all have the Bible verse in the New Testament. Then you can uh, just read it yourself. And number eight, saved by baptism of the flood. It's just like uh, the water, right? Water. Destroy every, everything. Uh, but on, only those who in the ark say, just like we are, we are, we are saved through baptism. Those who are saved are all in the same household, only one household. So no matter how many in the ark, all are one family, all called the Lord Jesus, my Lord. And we are his children. Number 10, inside the ark, all creatures were in harmony, did not harm one another. It is the, just like a you know, very peaceful, peaceful place. Even though it's so, it's not big, but God already made it enough to contain all the living things. And food were prepared already. So, and those who in the ark have no worry about what to eat because those they need the necessity has been stored and provided. But Noah and his sons needed to manage it well as a steward, sermon. Make sure all the creatures, living things in the ark keep alive. If anyone die, then the species just gone. Right? So make sure everything in the ark must be alive. And this is the pit task. No, I have to take good care of the animals. Right? And remain a very harmonious environment. Of course, they will not harm each other, but this is how God trusts God trust these things uh, to Noah. The future of being safe are uh, entering into the beautiful new world because after flood, once they uh, exit the ark and they will see a new world. Just like uh, after uh, the great judgment day, uh, according to Revelation, it's a new world, spiritual world, paradise. Actually, this is a heavenly kingdom for us to, to live forever. Okay. Now, let's continue. In chapter 7, this is the, the third event, destruction through the flood. Chapter 7 is God's, God command Noah enter in the ark. So God set the timing and then the days in the ark, chapter 8, chapter 9, the new world after the flood. So, chapter 7, uh, chapter 7, chapter 7, from verse 1 to verse 6, 
verse one to verse six. This is the uh, you know uh, God's God's command to to Noah. Uh, now we we just uh, focus on the process of entering the ark. Okay, the time when he was six hundred years old. No one and his whole family will enter. And who is called to enter? Because actually God called those who needed to enter. Not Noah's personal selection. Right? So those who are in the ark were who are called by the Lord. Okay? So that's why in the, in the church, in two church. Those who can be saved and come to the Lord are come from God's work, not our own personal selection. So even though you may say, oh, this is good, this is pretty uh, nice. I want to save the person. I want to introduce them to the church. But if at the end, they may reject. They don't want, right? But some, you you consider, oh, they, they have no change. They, they will change. Believe in Jesus, they will come to the church. But you know, who knows? If God call them, then they will enter, and you they, they they may surprise you a lot. Okay, so who is called to enter? God. God called all those animals, living things. He want to enter. The flood comes, right? All the fountains broken up. The windows of heaven opened. Rain forty days and night. This is the, this is the, uh, the flood, right? Okay, God command Noah to be ready to enter the ark. This is the from first, first section. I I I actually have to uh, flip the the order. Okay, you and your family. Uh, this is from verse one. What to do? Now God commands say. Take seven pairs of clean animals, two pairs of unclean animals, right? So seven pairs of birds to keep the species alive. All right. I uh, mentioned already, everything in the ark are living things. And they have a responsibility to reproduction for the future because after the accident, the ark, the, the, the species, only depend on uh, the one who, who, which is in uh, the ark. God will not use another creation to make it. Right? So God preserve it and then God just bless them to continue reproduce. Time for preparation, only seven days. Only seven days. Rain will come. And Noah just did. Okay. Okay, summary. Summary. Inside the ark, all are living creatures according to its kind. Okay? Men work with God, follow God's command to manage the whole process. God is the just like a sermon, uh, the steward of God. It is God to make all kinds of animals to go to Noah on their own. So once God entrusts us, a task, God will also work on it. You have, you don't need to worry too much, but we just do our duty, whatever we're supposed to finish it. It is the responsibility of men to keep all alive in the ark. Okay. Good. Uh, and then in chapter seven, verse 16, God shut him in. When time's up, God just closed the door. No more. No one can op open it. Once God closed it, and then it's done. So now, now we, we have to understand the door of salvation is also the same. Uh, and so in, if you read, read uh, Revelation chapter 3, 7, it's the, the key is in the hand of God. Okay, so we have to, uh, that's why we needed to uh, preach before the, the door has been shut by, by Lord himself. And the flood cover all the earth. The whole of creation received judgment. And only 
Noah and his household who are in the ark remain alive. And you see how the, the flood covered all the high hills under the whole, the whole heaven. Uh, so you see the Bible describes this uh, flood uh, in other uh, passages in the scriptures, or you can flip it yourself. So this is, a, a, we can consider this global, global flood, not, not just area, just certain area. Okay, summary, let's uh, see what happened. At the second month of seven day, when Noah was 600 years old, then rain began, right? And those who obey God enter the ark and God closes the door and force, uh, for 40 days, actually, I, I, I have to uh, make a mistake. The third month of 27, right? It, let, me, let me change it. 27, okay, this is a, a, a 40 days. So we count uh, one month, 30 days. So all the fountains broke, all the windows opened. And all fresh die, they move on the earth for one, 150 days. So this is the, the period, the water prevail, uh, 15 cubits upward of the highest mountain. So total one, 150 days. And in chapter eight, especially mentioned, God remember Noah. God remember Noah and every living thing, all the animals that were with him in the ark. Okay. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water subside. After 150 days, and God used, make a wind come. So this is just like the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters in, in the beginning of the creation. Uh, just like a spirit. So spirit in the, in the Hebrew also, uh, same word of wind, wind, qi, right? Form. Uh, but now this time, you will create a new beginning, new world. So after this wind, God make it, and then the water will subside. Eventually, the, the water will dry up. Fountain, oh, fountain. So you see how God shut, right? The fountain of deep and the window of the heaven were also stuck. Then rain, the rain from heaven was restrained. It's God's judgment has passed. Enough, enough. Okay, then. This is uh, uh, after 150 days. Then in chapter eight, verse five, mountain eventually become visible. Become visible. Uh, so the, the water continue, can decrease to continue because this day is in, in verse five, right? And, and then, after 40 days, and Noah opened the window. It's a, in, verse, in verse six, chapter eight, verse six. After 40 days, now 40 days means in, in the 11 month, the days of 10, 11 months when Noah at 600 years old. And in verse seven, and a raven sent out. And the raven keep going to and fro until the water has dried up from the earth. So now is the argument, uh, it's debated whether the raven out and then in, into the, the, the ark. But 
if we consider the you know the spiritual meaning uh, of a layman, then uh, we later we see from verse eight to nine. Uh, verse eight to nine. He sent forth a dove uh, from him. So a dove sent out. The Bible didn't say how many days after a raven out. But if we view verse 10 and verse 12, it's all said seven days later. Right? Seven days later. So could be after seven days of sending out a, a raven, then now a dove was sent out again. So the the dove later uh, returned, right? Because uh, no praise for her feet, water still everywhere. And seven days later, one week, and now dove returned with an audit leaf, fresh. Uh, one week later, then the dove did not return. Now, so water fully abated. So this is the, the time we we see how Bible described in A chapter three, uh, chapter eight verse three. Here mentioned one hundred fifty days, right? The water were abated. So this is the total. So we we counted, then we 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 know the time in the twelve months. Of, on the day of 17, then the, the water, the, the, the earth dry, dry. A new, new life appeared. And verse 13, no, when he was six and 601, the first day of first month, before indeed the service of ground was dry. And now, at this, at this time, Noah removed the covering of the ark. But he continued, wait until the, com, com, the commandment, the instruction of God, and then he out of the ark. So in verse 14, second month, 27, God commanded Noah and his family go out of the ark. Then, all living things follow him out. So you see how this is a total 370 days in the ark. The water prevailed for 150 days and water to a base for 150 days again. And then the earth dry for 70 days. Okay, so this is the, the summary of how they enter in the ark. And then this is the a, a diagram. You can refer to the, this uh, slide will later send to you as you reference. And this is the in the ark, when they are in the ark, and uh, God decides when they go out, and God commanded uh, and announced His blessing. And Noah went out, and every everything just follow. It's a new world. It's special mention according to their families. Now, animal and human have descent because God uh, give them a different, uh, different uh, lifestyle, uh, different food to, to take for their surviving. All right, so this, when Noah went out of ark, first things build an altar to give thanks, give offering. And God smell a soothing aroma, and God make a covenant again with the creation. So this is all uh, in chapter eight, and this is a steps of how they enter in the new world, uh, because after after uh, the flood, God's salvation plan will be continued uh, through the descendant of Noah. And why, and let me finish this, 
if we consider uh, Raymond uh, sending out the Raymond, uh, Raven, refer to rely on the method of the word. Sending out the thought refer to rely on the Holy Spirit because this is a very clear uh, in the New Testament. So why Noah sent out three times of thought? We have to persistent and uh, patient and waiting for the evidence. Uh, if, if we believe without doubt, then we eventually see uh, God's promise fulfilled. Uh, okay, so just wait for God's timing and then listen to him and then we will receive what God promised. Okay. All right, so let's conclude here and hope uh, we have learned something out of this class uh, in the book of Genesis. All of the uh, slides were put into the, uh, the folder for your reference. You can study there. Okay. All right. So let's say a silent prayer. Ahmad, let's take a break.